Hello, my name is Adam Roberts and I will be the instructor for your course here at Athens Technical College. If you ever have any questions please contact me at 706-357-0162. Chapter 2 Codes, Standards, and Permits This is the lesson covering codes, standards, and permits. This lesson describes how they are developed and their importance to an inspector. The lesson also covers complaint procedures, as well as the processes for developing, amending and, and appealing local codes. This lesson also describes the permit process. Lesson Goal After completing this lesson, the student shall be able to explain codes, standards, complaint processes, and permits. Objectives Upon successful completion of this lesson, the student shall be able to 1. Identify appropriate resources for finding current and applicable codes and standards. NFPA 1031, 4.2.5 2. Explain complaint procedures. NFPA 1031, 4.2.4 3. Describe the role of an inspector I in the permitting process. NFPA 1031, 4.2.2 Codes and Standards Pages 41 to 51 Objective 1 Identify appropriate resources for finding current and applicable codes and standards. Inspectors must know difference between the terms. Codes are a Collection of rules and regulations enacted by a legislative body to become law in a particular jurisdiction. Codes may also be based on a standard or incorporate an entire standard in them. So, with that being said, what is a standard? A standard is a set of principles, protocols, or procedures. A standard normally explain how to do something. They also provide a set of minimum guidelines that are expected to be followed to achieve compliance with a code. A code is a law that may be based on or may incorporate a standard. A standard becomes a law when it's legally adopted by a jurisdiction. Standard is included as part of a code. Codes are legal documents that govern activities at various levels of government. Before the creation of standardized model codes, jurisdictions developed their own codes, which led to a wide variety of acceptable minimum levels of safety and some confusion among manufacturers and contractors who sold materials in multiple jurisdictions. So central organizations were needed to be formed to write consensus or model codes that could be applied universally. Building and fire codes or standards may be classified as either prescriptive or performance-based. Prescriptive based code slash standard Also known as a specification based code slash standard Describes types of materials that can be used They describes how those materials must be assembled Performance based code or standard Describes an acceptable level of performance that an assembly material or system must meet Does not state how the item is assembled this gives the designer greater freedom than a prescriptive based code slash standard does. Prescriptive slash model codes Describes a set of requirements that are similar to a standard. They are generally called prescriptive codes. They are developed by a consensus organization such as NFPA or the ICC. Prescriptive slash model codes contain agreed upon requirements for such thing as Fire protection Building construction Structural safety Building sanitation Life safety Model codes are only enforceable when the authority having jurisdiction adopts them. They may adopt the model code without changes. The code may be amended to address specific local conditions and needs. 
Inspectors must be thoroughly familiar with the locally adopted code and its amendments. Explanatory commentaries and handbooks are available for some of the codes. Consensus organizations provide training sessions and workshops all the time. There are two model code organizations in the United States and one in Canada. Each code organization has a series of codes. These codes are used to regulate building components such as structural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. They are used to regulate fire and life safety issues as well. Some of the code and standards organizations are Canadian Commission of Building and Fire Codes, CCBFC, National Fire Code of Canada, NFC, National Building Code of Canada, NBC, International Code Council, ICC, International Fire Code, IFC, International Building Code, IBC, National Fire Protection Association, NFPA. Some of the codes you need to be know are NFPA 1, Fire Code, NFPA 101, Life Safety Code, NFPA 5000, Building Construction and Safety Code. Performance-Based Design To address unique buildings or processes when prescriptive requirements do not adequately address the following. Design Construction Operation Maintenance the resulting solution must provide a safety and dependability level that is equivalent or superior to the model code requirements. One benefit of performance-based design PBD, is that the fire protection solution can be achieved in a more flexible manner than with prescriptive-based design. For example, in a high-rise, total evacuation may be unrealistic and unnecessary during the initial phase of fire growth. Performance-based design of the means of egress may permit elevator use as a component, enables occupants to move from the floor of the fire origin to an area of safety but not exiting the structure. Difficulties associated with enforcing performance-based codes are that the AHJ must establish acceptance testing criteria, methods of evaluating test data, procedures for acceptance or denial of test results, Significant technical expertise is required to review and evaluate performance-based designs, often require Professional engineers Third-party inspection agencies Inspectors evaluating PBD options must evaluate or review The AHJ must also establish how the assembly functions, as it is actually used and should be maintained, not only how it functions under its intended use Historical design documentation prior to inspection is also important. If a building changes use it must meet and comply with modern fire and building codes which is difficult. Note, the inspector may consult the Society of Fire Professional Engineers in addition to the ICC Code Officials Guild to performance-based design review. Application of codes Some jurisdictions use locally developed codes. However, most jurisdictions adopt model codes. Inspectors should be familiar with model codes and standards referenced in the adopted code. For example, if the AHJ has adopted the ICC International Building Code, it adopts by reference NFPA 13, Standard for the Installation of Sprinkler Systems, this adoption makes it legally binding. Elements of adopted electrical, plumbing, and mechanical codes that reference the fire code or are referenced by the fire code are also important. For example, mechanical code includes installation details for smoke dampers, duct smoke detection, fire protection for commercial kitchen hoods. Requirements are also found in fire code, be familiar with them when reviewing plans or making field inspections. 
be aware that some facilities may have to meet the requirements of multiple codes. G. The way codes are applied to new and existing structures is also important. Multiple codes. A hospital may need to meet several codes. Such as they may have to meet the locally adopted building and fire codes. A good example is a portion of the facility may have to meet NFPA 101, Life Safety Code because of healthcare licensing requirements in that area and not others. They may also have to enforce more restrictive code requirements or coordinate enforcement efforts. New and Existing Structures the current adopted edition of the building code applies to all structures that are built while that code is in effect. Any additions or alterations to existing structures are regulated by the current code. Alterations to an existing building or change of use that meets certain criteria requires that the entire structure be brought up to the current, and stricter, building code. For example, an existing high-rise structure that was not required to have sprinklers when it was built may be required to have them installed when renovations are made to more than 50% of the building. When there is a change of use the fire code that governs the new use must be enforced. Requirements for existing structures will remain the same as those applied during the original construction. For example, cannot require the installation of sprinklers in an existing structure unless changes have been made to the building or there is a retroactivity clause in another adopted code some codes include a phrase such as all new and existing structures shall meet this requirement permits the requirement of stricter code for existing structures note unless inspectors are specifically given authority they cannot apply current building code requirements to existing structures. Current Codes and Standards Inspectors must know the adopted editions of codes and standards in their jurisdiction. Codes may be created locally, a zoning code that regulates the size of advertising signs along street or highways. Building and fire codes may be model codes adopted by the jurisdiction as they were published or with amendments. Most model codes are revised on a regular basis. Typically every three to five years. When this happens the revisions of the model code do not take effect unless the AHJ legally adopts the new edition. It's not unusual for an older edition to continue to be enforced for a number of years after a new edition so it's a good idea to hold onto copies of the older codes. Consistent codes and standards. Inspectors continually monitor applicable code provisions enacted at all levels of government. This prevents conflicts between the various codes. For example, fire and life safety codes must be consistent with other codes. This avoids duplication of effort and attempting to enforce contradictory regulations. Interpretation must be clear and consistent within the purpose and intent of fire codes. Inspectors must be familiar with the types of structures in the jurisdiction. You should develop good working relationships with other code enforcement and inspection departments. Additional methods for keeping current with building changes are Monitoring business license applications Monitoring the issuance of occupancy and activity permits. Conducting an annual occupancy inventory survey. Monitoring new electrical service applications. If a conflict occurs between codes, the best options for a solution are Cooperative manner between parties. Use a common sense approach. Code war with the developer is destructive. To the code enforcement process and to the professional image of all involved departments. Most codes allow the AHJ some degree of latitude in interpretation. Inspectors from different departments within a jurisdiction must maintain open lines of communication. 
and work to produce equivalent, alternate solutions. If compliance cannot be achieved, an alternative should be requested from the AHJ. Note, an inspector I should understand the concept of codes while an inspector too should know how to evaluate the performance of materials and practices designed to meet the intent of the code requirement. Standards are an attempt to obtain consistency in design, practice, materials. Standards offer inspectors a guide to practices and designs that have been proven successful. A number of organizations develop and publish consensus standards that relate to building construction, fire and life safety, hazardous processes, these are called industry standards they do not have the force of law unless adopted by the jurisdiction's governing body. Thesis standards are recognized as authoritative documents, meaning they're the experts. Consensus standards refers to a document that a committee of experts has developed and agreed upon before publication. Consensus standard committees represented by trade associations, scientific and professional societies, special interest groups or persons, government agencies, standards developing organization. Most prominent organizations in the U.S. include National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, ASTM International, originally known as the American Society for Testing and Materials ASTM, Underwriters Laboratories, UL, American National Standards Institute, ANSI. In Canada, each province adopts approved standards independently from the Canadian federal government. Approvals are given by the Standards Council of Canada, SCC, and ANSI which facilitates standards development through the consensus process. National Fire Protection Association, NFPA. A NFPA develops and publishes the majority of consensus standards in the U.S. and Canada concerning fire protection, electrical systems, life safety systems. When the need for a standard is recognized, NFPA invites participants with expertise in that field to form a committee and develop a draft. The draft is then made public for review and comments. The committee then reviews comments. They may or may not incorporate into finished document. The final version submitted to the NFPA general membership for publication. Inspectors should be familiar with INFPA 1, Fire Code Trademark 2 NFPA 13 standard for the installation of sprinkler systems 3 nfpa 14 standard for the installation of standpipe and hose systems 4 nfpa 25 standard for the inspection testing and maintenance of water-based fire protection systems b nfpa 70 national electrical code 6 nfpa 72 national fire alarm and signaling code 7 NFPA 101, Life Safety Code 8 NFPA 241, Standard for Safeguarding Construction, Alteration, and Demolition Operations 9 NFPA 704, Standard System for the Identification of the Hazards of Materials for Emergency Response X NFPA 1031, Standard for Professional Qualifications for Fire Inspector and Plan Examiner 11 NFPA 5000, Building Construction and Safety Code. DNFPA publishes handbooks to help inspectors interpret standards. I may be introduced in legal proceedings to demonstrate accepted industry practices. Two handbooks that inspectors may use include A. NFPA 1, Fire Code Trademark. B. NFPA 101, 
Life Safety Code Handbook. C. NFPA 72, National Fire Alarm and Signaling Code Handbook. D. NFPA 70, National Electrical Code Handbook. E. NFPA 13, Automatic Sprinkler Systems Handbook. F. Fire Protection Handbook. 8. ASTM International. A. A consensus-based standards writing and testing organization. B. Develops testing processes that other testing organizations use in the development of safety products. C. Standards that affect building construction include. IE84 Standard Test Method for Surface Burning Characteristics of Building Materials. 2E108 Standard Test Methods for Fire Tests of Roof Coverings. 3E119 Standard Test Methods for Fire Tests of Building Construction 9 Underwriters Laboratories, UL A Independent, Not-for-Profit Product Safety Testing and Certification Organization B Products that bear the UL label have been tested for their intended use and are certified as safe when properly used and maintained C Provides Third-Party Testing and Certification D. Developed over 800 standards for safety, some directly relate to fire and life safety. I. All 260 standard for dry pipe and deluge valves for fire protection service. 2. All 268 smoke detectors for fire alarm systems. 3. All 299 dry chemical fire extinguishers. 4. All 300 standard for fire testing of fire extinguishing systems for protection of commercial cooking equipment. B. All 1626 standard for residential sprinklers for fire protection service. 10. American National Standards Institute, ANSI. A. Private, non-profit organization. B. Administers and coordinates the Voluntary Standardization and Conformity Assessment System. I consensus process is guided by principles of consensus, due process, and openness. 2. Besides accrediting organizations that develop consensus standards, ANSI includes an appeals process for manufacturers who wish to contest test results. 3. Ensures access to the standards process is made available to anyone directly or materially affected by a standard under development. Four thousands of individuals, companies, and government agencies voluntarily contribute their efforts to standards development. See many ANSI standards are cross-referenced between NFPA and OSHA documents. 11 Standards Council of Canada, SCC. A. A federal crown corporation with the mandate to promote efficient and effective standardization. B. Represents Canada's interests in standards-related matters in foreign and international forums. C. Standards approved are the basis for regulations that influence fire and life safety. D. Standards may be developed by a number of organizations. I. Canadian Standards Association, CSA. 2. Underwriters Laboratories of Canada, ULC. 3. Canadian General Standards Board, CGSB. 4. Bureau de Normalisation du Quebec, BNQ. E. Many Canadian fire and emergency service agencies use the NFPA Professional Qualification Standards for training and certification. F. ANSI standards are recognized in Canada, normally used as references in Canadian codes. Complaint Procedures Pages 51 to 52 Objective 2, Explain Complaint Procedures Complaint Procedures Inspection Organization SOP should outline a procedure for receiving and processing complaints. Inspectors should process and act upon each complaint consistently and record all pertinent information. Complaints that do not require immediate attention can be routinely assigned to inspection staff or qualified company officers to research and investigate. Complaints that involve a serious life safety threat require immediate action and rapid correction. The type of occupancy, location within the occupancy, 
and severity of the complaint determines whether an inspector needs to give advance notice or to obtain an administrative warrant to enter the location. Voluntary compliance is always a goal, issuing a citation and the subsequent penalty sends a strong message to the community. An inspector must carry and display appropriate identification, explain the purpose of an unannounced inspection, Upon finding a code violation, an inspector must initiate the process that leads to a corrective action. Be prepared to deal with negative attitudes when they act on complaints. Maintain a professional demeanor even if the other person does not. When a complaint has been resolved, the person who initiated it must be formally notified and thanked. This acknowledgement provides confirmation that the person has contributed to the community's safety. All complaints must be documented and maintained in the organization's record-keeping system. Complaint forms may be filed by Location Date Type Electronic records can be cross-referenced for easier retrieval. Accurate record-keeping is essential, records can confirm when a pattern of violations begins to appear. Always refer to the complaint records before making an inspection. Determine whether violations have been reported about the property previously. An owner of several properties may have a record of code violations involving more than one address. Cross-referencing code violations by ownership and addresses are important means for tracking repeat offenders. Permits. Pages 52 to 56 Objective 3, describe the role of an inspector I in the permitting process. Permits are an official document that grants a property owner or other party permission to perform a specific activity. They may be obtained for a single event, such as a fireworks display or they may be obtained for a continuing operation or process, such as the manufacture of fireworks. Building, fire, and slash or code enforcement departments may be assigned the authority to issue and monitor permits. Inspectors must be aware of all types of permits or licenses issued by the jurisdiction. They must be aware of the steps in the application and issuance process. You must be aware of previous permits that have been issued and the types of activities they cover. Permits are issued for two reasons. One they ensure that hazardous situations or conditions are not allowed to develop within the jurisdiction without the knowledge and approval of the AHJ. And two they enable inspection personnel to ensure that the conditions meet the applicable code requirements. Permits are issued for Specific conditions Specific locations Specific times Permits are not transferable beyond the conditions stated on the permit. Permits authorizes, by law, the right of entry for the fire inspector at any time to ensure compliance with code requirements and to ensure compliance with the conditions of the permit. Permits are not issued to a party to avoid having to meet minimum code requirements. Each model code defines the types of situations that require a permit or license. When adopting codes, local governments may add to or delete permit requirements based on local needs. Within the codes, the permit requirement is usually contained in the section relating to the activity requiring the permit. The International Fire Code IFC, has two types of permits, operational and construction. Operational permits allow a person or group to conduct an operation or business, specified amount of time or until the permit is renewed or revoked. Construction permits are issued for the installation or alteration of a system or equipment. NFPA 1 does not make this distinction between operational and construction permits. Operational permits are used to regulate certain activities, including 
storage, use, dispensing, and handling of hazardous materials, and hazardous operations or processes. Installation slash operation of equipment in connection with hazardous operations, maintenance, and storage are also covered. Operational permits also address open burning. Temporary membrane of structures or large area tents. Construction permits. The IFC requires construction permits for the installation of fire protection system. They are also required for the repair, abandonment, removal, storage, or use of a particular item, such as automatic fire extinguishing systems, medical gas systems, standpipe systems, fire alarm and detection systems related equipment, spraying or dipping processes, private fire hydrants, fire pumps and related equipment, industrial ovens, flammable and combustible liquids, hazardous materials, compressed gases and cryogenic fluids, liquefied petroleum gas, temporary tents and membrane structures. Review qu see pages 52 of Chapter Summary One locally adopted codes and standards provide the legal basis for the tasks that an inspector performs. Two originally developed through a consensus process, codes, and standards are not mandatory until they are adopted by the AHJ. Three once adopted, they can be modified to meet local needs. Four an inspector should be familiar with the code adoption and modification process, the appeals process, and the original consensus process. 5. The inspector must also be familiar with the permitting process.